from harmless heckling well, the real Mr. Chris Luxton, oh, you're a funny guy, up. mate. You're a real funny guy. To trespass. To the people who came and vandalised my fence. This campaign hits different. Things are, are edgier, I think, than they've been in the past. Politicians aren't strangers to a bit of argy-bargy. Campaigns bring out colourful characters. You're being disrespectful. But in the lead-up to this election, we've seen a more sinister undercurrent. People are generally more anxious, more angry. I do believe that the trends we're seeing now in terms of polarisation are a lasting feature of the way we're engaging with information on social media particularly. Disinformation Project Director Kate Hanna says social media is transforming discontent into something more dangerous. That very vulgar, violative and violent expression is normalised and is now being used to conduct part of our election discourse. A man has been trespassed after allegations of an incident at the home of 21-year-old Te Party Māori candidate Hano Rafati Maipi Clark. There's a whole group who are really scared that as Māori and as our culture gets stronger and we resume or um, claim our role back under Te Tiriti, that they're going to lose something. Police are investigating claims Labour MP Angela Roberts was slapped last week. Leaned in and slapped my cheek and said, enjoy being in opposition. Senior Wahine Māori have also spoken out. I will not be dehumanised. I will not be minoritised. Northland candidate Willow Jean Prime says this election has delivered some of the worst racist abuse she's seen. I am worried about this election. I believe it is unhinged. I believe people are emboldened. I believe it is unsafe. My husband said, can we please take two cars? I do not want the children in your Willow Jean Prime car. National Party candidates have also been threatened and intimidated. We have been the victim of gang violence and intimidation, uh, and it's outrageous. National says one of its candidates moved house after a threat, another was filmed at a restaurant, and another had a beer poured over them. They claim volunteers have received death threats, been abused and followed, and one had a dog set on them. This is not a party political issue. It's an issue around high-profile people and particularly women and people of colour. We'll have a reversion back to a single set of voices at the table. In 2019, Green Party co-leader James Shaw was assaulted on his way to work. Somebody tried to talk to me. I said, take your hands off me, and he started punching me in the head. Then COVID struck. What I think COVID did was pour real fuel on the fire. Things may improve a little as we get further away from that, but still the drivers of social media and the way that's making people think about the world are there and uh, will continue to be a real concern. It's become clear New Zealand is following in the footsteps of other countries. And those with knowledge of the discourse going on below the surface fear things will get worse before they get better. He's going freely. When Jacinda Ardern resigned, the country got a hint of the toll on public figures. I know what this job takes and I know that I no longer have enough in the tank to do it justice. Earlier this year, an online hate tracker found Ardern was the target of 93% of all toxic posts screened as part of a study by the University of Auckland. More than 5,000 intensely abusive messages were levelled at Ardern, with the former Prime Minister facing online vitriol at a rate between 50 and 90 times higher than any other high profile figure. Yeah. Go home, no one likes you here. As the threats towards politicians have ramped up, so has security. There was $14 million in this year's budget to boost MP security, and both Parliamentary Service and the Electoral Commission are offering extra security advice. Candidates and volunteers are door-knocking in pairs, and politicians have been directed not to walk home at night. Mobs and malls are becoming a thing of the past. Instead, it's tightly managed meet-and-greets with supporters. What we're seeing is a bit of a threat to our democracy, our, our way of organising our country. National Party campaign chair Chris Bishop believes it's important to keep things in perspective. We don't want to live in a democracy where leaders only speak to people that they already know, that are pre-vetted with pre-vetted -pre questions in safe and secure and sanitised environments. That, that's not New Zealand. The changing landscape will continue beyond October 14 and it's more than just politicians who could be in harm's way. My fear is not just for a politician to be targeted in this manner, but for an ordinary citizen.